Sister Annie, if you would come forward. It is such a privilege to have her here tonight. We love her. She does an amazing job. I wish she would actually give her this for family. I think this is the first time your children can leave with you. Yes. I don't think they need it. God bless you all. Bless you. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here, uh, for me to be here. It's truly an honor. It's, every time I have to step up in a pulpit, even in my local church, um, I feel that it's such a, a... I feel it like a heavy burden because we are saying that I have something to say that comes from God. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. And I don't want to say absolutely anything that it does not come from him because I am using his name. So if it doesn't come from him, please pray for me that I that it will not come from my mouth. Because we get tempted, you know, we, we want to be light and we get tempted to say things that will people will want to hear. And not what God wants you to hear, but I want you to hear. I want the words that come out of my mouth today to be the words that God wants you to hear. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So thank you. Thank you for your prayers today. I, I do have my family, my complete family with me today. Uh, my husband Edison and my daughter Jada and Jason. She's 11 years old. Um, 11 and my son just turned seven, seven years old. They're a blessing in my life. Um, and my husband is too. He's, he follows me where I go. He, he's, he's, a, he's the backbone of my ministry. Yes. And I uh, support the ministry of my church. I'm a minister there. Um, but I, I support fully the minister of my pastor. And so I'm under her. And I, you know, my husband is. Follows me and lets me do, lets me to do ministry. Let's summarize. Um, I'm very blessed for, for him. Um, I have been, he's, he's a man of not many words when it comes to church, but he lets me do my ministry, supports me. And that's that's great. That's great. That's, that's, that's he's doing what God asked him to do right now. That's that's awesome. And God blesses us for that. That's um, amazing. I have barely been home this summer. I, went to the summer camps and then I went to Dominican Republic and then I just came back from Guatemala uh, doing a mission trip. So I am excited for what God is doing all over the world and what I see the Lord doing. You may not see it, but God is doing some great work all over the world. And now uh, we are excited. And so I, it's such a wonderful thing that you signed that song right before I came up because I am going to talk today about the second coming of Christ. And that's just amazing how God arranges things. Hallelujah for us. So I want you to open your Bible. First, I, I want to ask my daughter. She learned a, a verse in our Sunday school class last week. And I, I wanted to repeat that verse for you to recite that verse. So, Jada, would you come up? We all like sheep have gone astray, each of us to our own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, 6. Praise the holy name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5. And verses 25 to 27, we'll read those two verses. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not hanging spot or wrinkle or, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Yes. Jesus, we yes. come to you now. Yes. There is absolutely nothing that I have to say. There is absolutely nothing that I can say. 
hallelujah, that can change or help anyone, but your Holy Spirit can. So I ask you, God, to give me the liberty to speak your word today, that your Holy Spirit may guide us today through everything that we will do. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. 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 And amen. Hallelujah. I, I love weddings. I love weddings. I absolutely love weddings. And, and the more I read the scripture and I've understood the scripture, I'm more and more and more in love with weddings. And see, Jesus, in his, um, in the word of God, I have been inside the word, I have been in love over the last three years. And maybe I told you this last year with the metaphors of the Bible. And so I love this one. This is, this is, my passion, what God has taken me over the last three years, is to study the metaphors of the Bible and the, the ways that God has come down from heaven in order to teach us to our own level. You know, when we teach children, we sit down with them and we teach them to their, to their level. We sit down eye to eye with them and God has done that in order for us to understand His great love for us. Yes. And so He says to us through this scripture, that he has chosen himself a wife. That is the church. And he has paid a price for the church. And he is going to take it upon himself to cleanse us and make us perfect in order to take us and complete the marriage one day when he returns. Yes, yes, yes. yes. What I want you to know today, hallelujah, and for which I am excited is that he's not coming for a, he doesn't have many requirements for this church. What he wants for his bride is to be holy. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. And holiness goes beyond the way that I look and the way that I dress and the way that I speak and the way my speech and the things that I sing and the music that I hear. It is a condition of the heart.
The way that this ceremony took place, please hear me out, okay? This is more teaching than preaching, but there, this is so profound from God. Because we are so afraid of the second coming of God. We don't even want to speak about it. We don't want to speak about Jesus coming back because we're afraid of it. We're afraid of the beast and the 666 and the serpent and the woman and the child. And we're afraid of all these things that we're not going to be here for. Listen to me, please. We will not be here. Judgment is not for you. Judgment is for those who will not be saved. For us, there will be a way to be celebrated in heaven. So church, get excited for the second coming of Christ. Get excited for the trumpet to sound because Jesus will be coming to take his bride. What Jesus did when he came to earth was exactly this, what I am explaining. It was a process of withdrawal. He married the church. He paid a price for her. See, let me tell you about the story. When someone would be betrothed to someone, a woman betrothed to a man, it wasn't just an engagement that could be broken by the returning of the ring. It wasn't just that. They were married. There was a signing of a contract that could not be broken except for by divorce. And that was not likely done. But what happened was that when they, when this happened, the families would get together and it would be a process called a mohar. And the mohar was a prize paid for the bride. Just like Jesus paid a great price for us. And it was believed that the greater the price that was paid for a bride, the more valuable she was. And oh, you are valuable because the highest price was paid for you and me, yes. the blood of Jesus Christ, yes. the Son of God. So that right after that process, the groom would go away. And Jesus said himself in the Gospels, I am going away to prepare a place for you. In my Father's house there are many mansions. I Jesus. I am going away to prepare a place. In the meantime, the bride would get ready for her yes. big day. I don't know of any brides that are waiting for the wedding day as doomsday. No. Like yes. we are. No. I don't know of any bride. I don't know when you got married, brides, if you would think about your wedding day as doomsday like we think about the second coming of Christ. But we were excited, awaiting the moment. There was a different look in our faces. There was an excitement. And we need to get excited about Jesus coming because our groom is coming for us. Thank you, Lord. Here he comes. Hallelujah. <laughs> She would get ready. Her house was ready. Her nails were done. Because the thing is that nobody knew when the groom would come. Uh -huh. This is exactly this is what Jesus is playing out here. This is what Jesus is doing. We don't know when he is coming. All we were told is to be ready. And then when the wedding day would come. The next process of the wedding is called the lifting. Do you hear that? It was called the lifting. Do you know why? Just like Jesus, there would be a trumpet. And if you read song, um, the book of Song of Songs, there is a chapter there in which she hears and she says, there's the voice of my loved one. Do you hear it? Because there would be a trumpet sound. And all the young women would come out dancing. And do you remember in uh, Matthew chapter 25, the story of the ten bridesmaids, the ten virgins. They were ready waiting. And some of them were ready and some of them were not. They didn't know the time because just like that, it was Jesus who said it, that just like that, nobody knows the hour. And nobody knew the hour the groom would come ancient times and Jesus said nobody knows the hour except my father that's exactly what happened in the ancient times only the father knew and would tell the groom it's time to go get your bride just go now so in this process in the moment of the lifting the 
nobody knew about. Nobody knew when it would happen. There would be the friend of the groom that would sound a trumpet. And that trumpet would announce and listen to what the voice of God says in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the day cries will rise first, and then Yes, 
we got the kingdom of God. We are workers for the kingdom. We need to understand we are his bride. And our, our job is to get ready. This earth is not for us. There is so much better. Everything that is happening, and I, and I, I love our country, but everything that is happening here is probably none of our business. Our business is heaven. Yes. And heaven first. Heaven first. And everything else, we'll take care of the earth. And everything else, everything else, while we're here, we'll do that at heaven first. Our priority is making it to heaven, yes. meeting Jesus, getting people saved, talking to people, letting them know that there is a God, that yes, he did say that there will be judgment, but he provided a way for redemption. Yes, yes he did. Yes. Yes. Jesus said a parable in um, Luke chapter 14. Verses 15 through 24. And he, he's, he says that, that, that this man had a great feast prepared. And he invited yeah. certain people to come in. Yeah. But everyone had come up with an excuse. <laughs> See, one said, I bought a few oxen and I need to go and take care of them. And someone else says, I just inherited a land. I need to go take care of my land. And someone else says, I just got married. I gotta go. I don't have time. And all these things are not bad. When has it been bad to do business? God wants us to do business. God wants us to do well on earth. God wants us to prosper, yes. Someone else inherits a land. Yes, we should go and plow the land and prepare the land and do business and do great things. Someone else got married. Yes, that's good. It's good to take care of the family. But the moment that you put those things before your purpose in life, which is God, you're sinning, my friend. I'm sinning. And we're so guilty of that. See, because they didn't say no to God. They didn't say no. They just said, not now, God. Not right now. And I don't know how, I, I am guilty, I am so guilty. I don't know how many times the Holy Spirit has woke me up just over the last month and I have said, not now, God. <laughs> Do you understand? How many times I've been cooking in my house and the Holy Spirit lays someone in my heart and I should put that spoon down and turn off the stove and just go and pray with, with this person and I have said, not now, God. I want to do my business. How many times we've been binging on CV and, and on whatever we're doing on business, or, you know, on playing with the grandkids and planning parties and doing things, and we say to God, God, lay something in our heart, and we say, not now, God. I got things to do. I'll do it later, but that later never comes. It's now. It's now. It's now. Because I, I gotta tell you, there is nothing, you know, we, we, I remember, you know, my dad saying things like, when I stop working and I retire, I am gonna preach this gospel like I haven't been able to in all these years that I've been working. Well, he retired, he found something else to do. Yeah. Yeah. It came slowly, sneaking in. But that dream he had has never come true. Doesn't mean that he doesn't love God. Doesn't mean that he's not doing the work of God. Doesn't mean that he's not preaching the gospel. But the grandeur dream that he had and that he waited for, because the moment was when he thought about it. We could be working and still, we can minister to people. We can be out and in, in, in the workplace and still take the time to minister to people and do it wholeheartedly. And if we have the time to, you know, just stop drinking that coffee, get up from that couch and just go do what God lays in your, in your mind right now, right now, because this is the time. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. If we wait until we 
and half the time, that time will never come because all our things will get us busy. Yes. 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 <laughs> uh, I gotta tell you, there is nothing of this world. Everything that seems so valuable to right now, everything that seems like we gotta do it, we gotta do it now, is not that important when we measure it to eternity. Amen. 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 <laughs> when we compare that, the time frame that we're here, and what we do here will qualify us for the next. Once we cross that door of eternity, there is nothing else we can do. So there's a lot of things that we do that are not that important. If we were told today, and I'm closing, if we were told today, today, that as we leave the next 24 hours, will determine how we will leave the next 1,000 years. It would be an understatement comparing that to eternity. So I tell you, how we live this 24 hours of earth time will determine how we will live the next 1,000 years. And that's an understatement. There is nothing in this world. Hate? If I hate someone, that's, that's not enough. The Bible says that let us, let, let us take away the weight of sin. Yeah. Let us, and I'm paraphrasing because I study the Bible in Spanish. But it says, let, take that weight of sin off and run this race. So whatever we got to do, let's do it now. Yeah. If I got all forgiveness in my heart, let's do that now. Yes. If I have not laid everything of me before the cross, let's do that now. I want to do it now because comparing that to eternity, it is nothing. I want to spend eternity with Jesus. And yes. when I read this, yes. when I read the Bible, I, I, please, please stand with me. We're, we're going to close here. about that moment, but I am awaiting that moment like Amen. nothing else. Amen. Yes. I, I, there's, I don't want nothing to hold Amen. me back in this yes. world. There is nothing more than here. There is nothing more than to stay here. There is nothing. There is no sin. There is no hatred. There is nothing worth my time to stay here. I want to go to heaven. I am getting ready as the bride of Christ that I will be picked up any day now. Yes. Revelation 7 and 9. In this I beheld a great multitude which no man could number, all nations and all kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the land, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God, which sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. Mm. Oh, yes. I don't know if you see yourself there. It was written in the scripture one night while I was preaching and literally I was transported to that moment. And literally while I read it, I don't know what I read or if I read or if the church read, but I saw myself literally in that place with my both of my hands lifted up, dressed in white and a multitude of people saying hallelujah to the Lamb. And I saw myself right there and I don't know about you, but if you the word of God, if you think this is about someone else and you see someone else in a multitude of someone else, but I see you and I see me, we all the holy people of God, we will stand before the throne. Revelation 19 and 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For 
for the fine linen and the, is the righteousness of the saints. That's about you and me. That's, that's not about anyone else. That's about you and me. That's you who's there. Our righteous acts have been made into that clean white linen. That's you and I. The bride of Christ. So if there's any doubt in your mind, any doubt in your mind, anything that you want to lay down before God, I want you to come to Jesus. See, you're going to be tempted right now. To just say, you were touched by the message, not by my message, but by the reading of the word of God. I know. I know because I know the Holy Spirit is here. And I know the work the Holy Spirit does in people. I know. But when we sit there in the pews, we just go like, if I go there, people are going to know that there's something that's not right. But none of that's going to matter if you have to step into eternity tonight. that's going to matter if the trumpet sounds tonight. None of that's going to matter. So if there's something you want to lay before the cross, I'm not going to ask you what it is. I, I'd love for people to have these conversations with God. I just want to guide you to have this conversation with God. Let Him, let him take care of it. But let you come and say, here I am, God. I know there are things that you're working in me. I, there are things that I have been denying God. There are things that I have been just trying to hide from you just like Adam did and right back there in Eden. But God, I want to come clean to you because you see me. You see me. Yes. See, when we read the scripture, <laughs> in 2 Corinthians 11, he sees you like a pure, perfect bride. And he knows you're imperfect and he knows I am imperfect. But the way that he sees me is not the way like I see myself. So the altar is open. This is the moment. Would you come? Would you stand in the presence of God and say, God, there are things that I want to fix inside of me and I haven't been able to fix it. But I know that if you call me to eternity today, I am in doubt. Yes. Here I am. Yes. Yes. I don't beg for help. Jesus is called. Yes. So come to. The purpose of this message is not to scare you, but for us to come like, like a bride that is looking yes. for. Looking for her wedding. Looking anxiously for her wedding. Let's get ready. Let's get ready. If there's any unforgiveness in your heart, we need to lay it down right here, right now. If there's any hurt from the past, let's lay it down right now. Come today.